almost every client that has an office outside of New York, when they call to say, we want to bring this foreclosure, says, I want to bring it in federal court. Uh, they've heard stories about how New York courts are very backed up and other horror stories, and they think federal court will be a better venue for them. Uh, most of them are unable to go forward with that plan because of diversity issues or the lack of diversity because the lender is some kind of limited liability company and you have to look at the members. And turns out there's a New York member. So if your client wants to go to federal court before you ex explain to them your judgment about which is a better forum, check to see whether there's diversity in the first place because the answer may be made for you. My experience with foreclosures in federal court, it, it could be an appropriate forum if you really want to move your case along, but if you want to have <laughs> settlement negotiations or you have some potential problem with your case, it might not be the place you want to be. And then when you go to enforce the sale and judgment, there are other sorts of issues and ministerial issues that you have to deal with. Um, so I think uh, the state court is the appropriate place for a foreclosure and in a commercial foreclosure action um, you don't have to go through the residential foreclosure settlement parts and other uh, pieces of the foreclosure that tend to take a long time. Um, so that's the first thing you have to decide where you're going to be when you prepare the summons. The next question you have is who are going to be my defendants? We've talked about that a bit uh, from the necessary defendants are going to be identified in your title uh, uh, foreclosure certificate. Uh, you have a single action rule, so you have to consider bringing everybody in that you want to uh, <laughs> be part of the party on the debt, uh, unless you have a good reason not to. Um, there are a couple of cautionary tales. For example, if you have a party who's in bankruptcy, as was mentioned, you will not be able to commence the action against them. Later on, if the bankruptcy case is closed, uh, you might want to uh, bring them in on a supplemental summons or bring a separate action and consolidate it, or it would be, it would be special circumstances under 1301. If there's been a death of uh, one of your guarantors, for example. You can't sue dead people. And uh, so you have to sue the appropriate personal representative. It might take a while to find out who that is. There might not have been one appointed, which causes problems for lenders. And uh, that's a whole nother course on another day uh, to go to the surrogate's court and have a personal representative appointed if the family hasn't had one appointed. Uh, but do be wary that you, if you sue, if you try to sue somebody who's already deceased at that time, you're going to have problems. <laughs>